Well, Hannah, so uh, awesome for you to come and uh, chat with me today. Uh, I'm so excited to hear uh, about your experience. Thank you. Thank you so much again. Um, no, my so pleasure. For us to get started, please uh, tell us your name. Tell us where you're based and what do you do? Okay. Uh, so my name's Hannah Foster Rowe and I am based in London in the UK um, and I'm a travel writer, <laughs> um, which still feels a bit, I don't, I still don't feel like I've earned my stripes with that oh. yet, but, um, but it's about the only thing I can do at the moment because my jobs are in theatre and they're still closed. So I can't say I work in theatres because I don't right now. So travel writer is more accurate these days. Oh, and then it rolls, <laughs> it rolls off your tongue. It rolls off your tongue. I love it. I love it. And the more the more natural and more comfortable it will be but uh i i love yeah. your dad that's awesome thank you it's sort of it's a self-fulfilling prophe prophecy as well because the more you say it, you the more you're like no i am a, yes. i am a travel writer you yes know? absolutely so. ah, you you got you got the lesson you got the lesson <laughs> sweet um, very good teacher <laughs> Thank you. So tell us, so what, um, uh, you were in um, my Storytellers in Action Masterclass this summer. Uh, tell us, what motivated you? What, why did you want to join it? And what were you hoping to achieve um, by joining the class? Uh, for me, like, it, it just, seeing it come up, it just came along at the most perfect point because I was... Like literally just before lockdown happened, I'd set myself up with a little travel blog and and I was and I set up the travel blog because I thought I was about to have my most exciting year of traveling ever. And then um and then lockdown happened and I had to cancel my trip to Oman that was literally just about to happen oh i had no idea um, we were going to oman oh my god i was like i was going to oman we were gonna we were gonna go hiking in the mountains we were gonna go into the desert we were gonna go to a nature reserve on an island in the middle of the gulf and none of that happened um so yeah and then and i just and it just felt like i got stuck into a bit of a i felt a bit like even though i was still sort of posting blogs and stuff from previous um like based on previous trips that i'd had i it, it felt a bit like i was screaming into the void because i was just like you know people can't travel right now they don't want to be reminded that they can't travel um and and i just it just felt like it wasn't you know, it wasn't really the, you know, it wasn't, it didn't feel like it was the right time for me to be blogging. And I just felt a bit stuck because yeah. I was so, I was so excited about, you know, trying to, you know, start myself on that path. And then I saw, cause I followed you on Instagram, um, for a while and it came up on Instagram and I was like, Oh gosh, I think that's, that's what I need. And I, I was, you know, furloughed from my job. So I wasn't working. So I, you know, I really felt like I needed some kind of purpose um so yeah so that's why that's why i signed up for the course and it was the best decision i've made in lockdown <laughs> so knowing that knowing that it was a good decision for you uh what was what do you think was uh the most impactful element of the class and what were some of your favorite parts uh definitely the fact that we were paired with accountability partners um because ever since we did the um the gretchen rubin four tendencies quiz that you had us all do and i found out i was an obliger so that so that means that you know i'm motivated by external pressures and by the fact that I don't want to let anyone down. Um, so having an accountability partner was perfect because that was exactly what I needed, even though like right from the beginning, because I, I was lucky I had two and they were both fantastic. <laughs> um, and, you know, from the beginning, we were very, you know, we were very kind to one another and we were just like, you know, we're not, yes, we're your accountability partners, but we're not going to be you know, we're not going to be horrible. We're not going to say, do, we're not going to say do this or I'll be really disappointed in you. Um, but it was, you know, from, from the beginning, it was very supportive and 
just a you know just a real sense of just us all wanting one another to do well and and so to be there for them in that sense that was that was great and and Kate has continued to be my accountability buddy um we uh we talk all the time I was voice noting her the other day (laughs) um so yeah she's uh yeah it's so that was good and just I just think just making a career in travel journalism just seem more accessible um and because you you said like when you talk about it to other people like people who aren't you know people who are interested in different things and you you hear yourself you hear yourself talk about it and it feels like such a pipe dream when you say like oh I want to pay to travel the world to you know travel the world and write about it and it um and it's hard to you know it's hard to validate that yourself and and sort of say give yourself permission to actually pursue that um but actually you know sitting down and listening to your you know listening to your seminars and doing doing the homework and stuff it was like you know and it's and also like it's and it's not a pipe dream and it's not as self-indulgent as you think like it's it's like it's so I don't know it just it just really opened my eyes to the fact that it just wasn't this whimsical intangible thing it was it was entirely possible yes oh my god it makes me so happy to hear you say that because (laughs) in some way it's just another line of work yeah but like, somehow somehow we have it in our society that oh it is whimsical it is frivolous why yeah because i saw i saw yeah. someone in, someone on instagram posting earlier it's a travel photographer that i follow and she um she's about to fly out to guatemala to do you know to do a project there and she made a point of saying in her instagram stories before anyone comes at me to say you know why are you traveling right now um you're being really irresponsible that kind of thing just know that this is my job I had to pitch for this work yeah. you know we've had to we've had to prepare for this work like that she was she was like that this is this is my work like this is this is right. the way I earn a living she was like I've taken all the precautions I've taken a test it's come back negative I'm gonna wear a face mask all the way there like don't come at me and say you know and you know demonize me for traveling now when actually I'm just working I'm just trying to earn a living yes absolutely absolutely yeah I love that awesome um so tell me so what are some of the things that you are um implementing now or using now since we've done you know the class was over what now five months ago or so oh my god <laughs> No, maybe less. Yeah, I guess five months. Uh, so are, are there some things that you're implementing that you're still using from the class that are helpful to you now? Yeah, I, I think I mentioned, you know, me and Kate are still accountability partnering. So that's, that's really good. And it's, and it's very casual. We're not constantly emailing one another and being like, oh, have you submitted to that thing yet? Like, um, so definitely that. And just a lot of what, um, cause a lot of the course I found was very, very holistic and very much like a self help thing almost as well, which, <laughs> I, which was exactly what I needed love it, love at the time. Um, because it is, cause it's very much about, it's very much about self belief and very much about, I'm actually, you can't see it on my t-shirt, but I'm wearing a t-shirt that says grow your dreams. And oh, I bought nice. it, I bought it just after finishing the course. Cause I thought it sounded like something you'd say. <laughs> And I was like, yes, grow your dreams. Um, and you know, so a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff about just, and, and being, you know, being patient and the fact that, you know, when you don't, when you don't get a reply to something or you get a rejection, it's not a reflection on you. It's not personal. Um, because it's so, it's so easy with any kind of rejection just to be like, oh, this means I'm not talented. It means I'm not good enough. It means I'm boring. And so, yeah, a lot of the, a lot of, um, a lot of the more sort of positive mindset stuff has, 
um, has stayed with me. Um, I refer back to my list of publications that we did all the time just to, um, just to keep myself connected and, and make sure that you know what I'm doing now is a stepping stone towards you know potentially working with those publications and you know just to make sure that I'm writing stuff like of a certain standard like I don't want to just do top 10 things to see and do in London like I want something that has a bit more body to it so I make sure I just constantly check in and with my publications and being like, is this something they'd go for? Um, Sounds like that, you're, you're approaching your work strategically. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm quite a, um, I'm Capricorn, so I'm a very practical person. And, um, and I do, and it's just sort of a natural thing for me to go back to, I go back to my publications list, I go back to the dream that you had us write down, and I'm just, you know, I refer every you know sort of decision I make to is this going to take me a step closer to achieving that dream and it's it's so it's so helpful and I feel like it's something like regardless of whether someone is a travel writer or a photographer or not I feel I think like that's something everyone should do um I agree. especially especially at the moment when it feels like the future is so far away <laughs> Um, and we don't know what that will look like and so it's just really good really good to refer back to those things and being like yes like one day that's what hopefully what things will look like yeah. for sure they will because you, you're doing the work right you you are doing you're doing the work and you're being very strategic and you're using that as your guidepost as a mm -hmm. like a you know that the lighthouse is there, you know, which direction to, to go towards. Um, yeah. So I have no doubt. So w with that, you, you doing the work, uh, what are some, some results or some things that you've been able to accomplish since you finished the class? And I'm watching you on Instagram and I'm always like, Oh, go Hannah, go Hannah. <laughs> oh dear. Um, well, you know, I want to, I want to keep it real as well, because yeah. the, fact of the, matter, yeah. cause the fact of the matter is I, so as part of the course, we, we work towards that final pitch that for, well, not the final pitch, the first, the final thing in the course, but the first pitch that we send out as part of, you know, our new path that we're following and and I still, you know, I, I never had, a, I never had even so much as a, an acknowledgement from that to say yeah, no, yeah thank you but no thank you like just nothing just um so which I want to so, caveat that is very normal in yes this yes, it's yes very yes, normal yes. and it's not a reflection <laughs> on you and it's not a reflection on your work right yeah exactly yeah exactly right so so I was very much like you know pick myself up dust myself up crack on and um it was actually it was actually thanks to kate again um i'm gonna have to like give kate some royalties or something <laughs> like because yes. i mentioned her so much um yes. but um it and was for kate others actually. for others listening kate is uh another student that we had in the class she's a wonderful photographer based in australia and yes <laughs> and we love her yeah um yeah, and she actually posted on um, on the Genius Women Facebook group about um, an online newspaper called Intrepid Times running a scholarship um, that they were going to award to, they said three people initially, but five people got it in the end, um, to work with them on their first ever published travel story um so so I went for it and it was like it was quite a it, quite a sort of casual application process they just wanted you to um to send in like a paragraph or so about you know why you thought why we thought it was important to share travel experiences um and also just to write a little bit about um a travel piece that we'd seen published recently that resonated with us and just to explain why it sort of struck a chord with us and that's all we had to do um 
and then yeah and then I got an email back saying congratulations <laughs> so so that so that was that and I yeah I was one of five that the editors worked with over a period of sort of a month or so to to craft a you know a travel story um and yeah so that was that was a lot of sort of drafting and um it was really useful because I think I think with I think with travel writing it's very easy to fall into um a style that's almost like journaling or like diary like then I did this and then I went for dinner and this was delicious and you know not exactly like that but right. um it's hard to when it what you know when when it's a personal experience of yours that you're talking about it's it's not always an easy thing to be able to attribute meaning to other people with that you, you, so it was it was a lot of you know how do I make how do I make this resonate with other people that don't know me from Adam right. um so yeah so it was a lot of that and it was you know it was good to because that was my first experience ever of working with an editor um and you know sort of learning when to um you know learning when to you know accept what they the, the, su the suggestions that they're giving you because at the end of the day they all editors just want your piece to be the best that it can possibly be yeah, absolutely right so um but then also um you know knowing when to you know when to stand firm on something when you feel particularly strongly about something and 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 being able to vocalize that and you know and we'd you know I'd developed a good enough you know rapport with my editor to be like actually you know can we can we go this way sort of thing so so that was good that was a really good experience so that um so that piece is published on Intrepid Times it's called The Parting Gift um and it's about it's basically my my origin story of my love for travel and my love for Paris so and it's a beautiful yeah. story it's a beautiful story I thank you it. and thank you. if you're watching this go go read it <laughs> the parting gift thank you you can't miss it there's a massive picture of the eiffel tower on it on the intrepid homepage, so you'll uh be able to find it and then and then yeah and um and then i was on instagram one day because i was because yuli you mentioned about oh hannah's always on instagram it's because I've literally got nothing else to do. Um, so, but also, you know, because I only started my blog and my travel orientated Instagram just before lockdown, I've got a lot of pictures. Like I've got a lot of backlog of stuff so I can, you know, I have, I'm, I'm quite fortunate in that I'm not like a lot of um, professional, you know, Instagrammers and bloggers and things who were, you know, desperately, running out of content I've got the opposite problem and I am just wading through an archive of um years worth of photos but um yeah and um I was I posted something the other week and I you know I like a I like a long a longer caption on Instagram I, I use I use Instagram as not just uh, because I don't actually I don't class myself as a a photographer at all I don't I don't have a super duper camera I just take photos on my phone and edit them a bit and um I use Instagram primarily as a way of storytelling and I put that in the captions and um and I do occasionally I don't know whether this is the right or wrong thing to do but I will occasionally cheekily tag publications in my photos just in case like particularly like smaller ones right. um right. they'll have more time to sort of click on it and be like oh who's this person why is she trying to get why is she trying to get our attention um and an editor saw one of my captions and slid into my dms <laughs> and uh, oh, I didn't know. that's how that's how that happened oh that's amazing yeah that's yeah awesome. and she and she was like you know would you be would you be interested in um, in writing a guest feature for us? And that's for um, Viaggio magazine. Um, so so I did. So I I you know emailed her and um, 
sent her a few different ideas and I said, you know, pick, pick your, pick your favorite and, you know, pick the one that you think will resonate most with your, with your readers. And so I did a little, um, Prague neighborhood guide for them, which got published on Monday. So you can also, <laughs> you can also read that. Awesome. That's, um, so That's so amazing. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so tell me, so how, uh, how did your, um, how did your experience in the class um, change or impact um, the way you approach publications, um, the way you think of yourself as a writer, the way you see this path, if, if at all, has, you know, how, how, did, how did that experience help or impact um, that? Um, so I think, I think, again, it's just, um, you know, I think, difficult because with any kind of writing whether it because I'm originally from a playwriting background and it was the same with writing plays as it is with writing a travel piece everything you write is a little tiny bit of your soul each time that you give away to someone so it do, it's very easy for it to feel personal yes. when, you, when you don't get a reply or you get a rejection or whatever yeah um and it's just it's just you know so important to have it in your head all the time that you know it's it's not per, it's not personal and it's it's not a it's not a reflection on you um and you know it's not really it's not made me afraid to sort of pitch anymore because I always felt like that there was this in, this invisible glass ceiling um and you know, and you sort of, you can, you can so easily talk yourself out of it because you think of, you think of the, the thousands and thousands of emails that those editors get in their inboxes and you're just like, you know, oh, you know, they'll never look at mine, you know, why, why should it be me? But also why shouldn't it be you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, cause someone, you know, someone's got to get those gigs and why shouldn't, why shouldn't it be you? So. Oh, I love um, that. I, that should be like, that should, that should be our tagline. Why shouldn't it be you? Why right? shouldn't it be you? I love that. I love <laughs> that. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and just, there was something else I was going to say and I've forgotten. But yeah, and just, um, no, I don't know. It's gone. But <laughs> I think it's, it's just, um, yeah, it's just really made me just not not afraid and just and oh this is what I was going to say and it's important to remember as well that you know just because there you know there isn't a home a specific you you don't find the home that you initially want for it for your piece for your story there will always be a home for it somewhere so just like so if you if you don't get a response to something or it gets rejected like go away rework it a little bit and send it on again until you find someone that sees what you see in it and you'll get it you'll and you'll find that person eventually you know they're out there so yeah yeah okay. you're you're inspiring me right now Hannah oh, I'm, so I'm like thinking okay there's this one piece that I did I have to go back and send it somewhere else <laughs> yes awesome. do it um finish this sentence for me um I almost didn't join because I almost didn't join because imposter syndrome. <laughs> um, I think, um, I, yeah, I almost didn't join because I didn't believe I was good enough. Um, and I didn't believe that I had anything worth saying or, or something worth saying that I thought other people would want to listen to. Um, yeah, there's a few potential <laughs> answers to that. A few, few potential endings to that sentence. Um, but the course really taps into that and taps in, you know, it taps into those fears and this sort of, um, this protective cloak that you put over yourself and you're just, when you you talk yourself out of doing something before you've even tried it because you just think like, nah, they, they, don't, they won't want me or they won't want to listen to me or whatever. Um, but, you know, 
it was the exact opposite experience on the course it was so it was so uplifting and supportive and just to I was thinking about it earlier and just be that very last um happy hour that we had um so for anyone watching um Yulia will as part of the course she um host um, a happy hour on zoom where you can go along with a drink of choice and you have a chat and it can be about the course or it can just be about general life and stuff and it's and that very last one that we had I felt really emotional at the end of it because I was just like you know we'd got we've got people on that zoom from Australia from America from Canada all these incredible women and I was just like and I just, I was just like looking at them all, just looking at the gallery on Zoom. And I was just like, I all want, I want the best for all of these people. Like, and, and we want that for each other. Um, and, and I, I really missed it. Like I really felt the empty space when, it, when the course finished. That's why I was like, Kate, still be my accountability buddy. I need it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It's so beautiful, yeah. Hannah. It's so beautiful. Oh, well, and, you you know, you you created it, you enabled it. So Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I felt the same when, when the class was over. I, I felt that that hole. Yeah. Sure. And that's the reason why the circle was created too, because I'm like, mm -hmm. how do I keep doing that? You know? Um yeah, sure. awesome. So last question. Um okay. who would you recommend this class uh to and why? Um, I would recommend it to people who are thinking, you know, people who love traveling, love storytelling, love other cultures, love other people. And, you know, who have always thought, oh, wouldn't it be amazing to do that, but always talk themselves out of it in some way, whether it's because they thought it was, um, because it was self-indulgent or because they weren't good enough or for any of the reasons that I've mentioned before. Yeah. Um, even if you, you know, even if you feel like that, just that anyone that feels like that, just, just do it anyway, because you get, it's so much more than just a travel journalism course. You get friends, you get a community, you get, a, you know, an enduring little support bubble that will last way beyond those, you know, those six weeks. Um, and also, you know, the, the momentum that it gives you and, and the, because, you know, you've just got these, these people that sort of watched you grow over the process of those six weeks and you, you know, and you finish the course and you're like, oh, I kind of want to do it for those people. And, um, yeah. yeah, so I think, yeah, for anyone, for anyone who has ever doubted themselves or even if, if someone has already had, you know, a piece published sort of here and there, but has maybe you know stepped back from it for whatever reason and you know I know we had a few people on the course that had you know started that journey initially and then retreated back from it so just 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 do it <laughs> do it <laughs> oh my goodness amazing amazing thank you so much Hannah thank you for your experiences thank you for your light your energy i'm so so excited to see what's next for you um it's gonna be oh awesome. it's my pleasure and thank you because without you you know it may have happened eventually but it wouldn't have sort of happened as quickly as it had and i wouldn't i wouldn't have had the you know the kick up the bum i needed at that time so thank you Anytime. I can, I can <laughs> kick the bum anytime. <laughs> um, thank you. Amazing.